All right, please be joined this time by one of the best new hires in Georgia, Coach Kareem Reed at McEachern. Coach, thanks for joining me. Oh, man, I appreciate you having me on. We're excited to be here. Coach, uh, there's some jobs in the state of Georgia that just seem to draw a lot of attention, and um, McEachern definitely one of them. So you had a great career at uh, Westlake and Griffin. You went off to University of Florida, and then you're back with us now. So what drew you to this job? But like you said, you know, uh, when I was here in the state, you know, the first go around uh, at Westlake and at Griffin, I always viewed McEachern as like my dream job as a high school coach. I said if I ever got an opportunity to get that job, I'd have to kick the tires on it regardless of where I'm at. And so, uh, you know, obviously with the resources, the facilities, the proximity to the city of Atlanta, I mean, I don't know if there's a better job in the state, honestly. And so um, the administration is, is, is in alignment there. It's a, uh, you know, they're fully supportive of all the athletics uh, organizations on campus. And so, uh, for me, it was just uh, really, really hard to turn that down. Well, Coach, they got a good one in you, and you got a good place. Sometimes just a good fit for everybody. And I, I really do think this is one of those times. Uh, so, you did a great job at Griffin and Westlake, but you go to the college ranks, you come back. What's something maybe that you know now that you didn't know a couple of years ago that you learned being away from it at the high school level? You know, it uh, honestly, going to college validated for me that I was doing it the right way when I was here. And so, mm -hmm. you know, more than anything, you know, like I said, it just kind of gave me the affirmation that I needed, that I was on the right track and I was building my programs uh, truly to prepare my athletes for the next level. And so, you know, that was one of my biggest takeaways. And then when I was at University of Florida last year, I learned a lot of nuances to running the program from Coach Napier in terms of just connecting people, how to deal with players. He was a very patient guy. Um, and so it taught me, uh, you know, it was a practice and patience for me as well, just observing him, how he handled different situations. And so I think this go around, I'll be even more polished as a, as a head coach. And I picked up a lot of things, obviously, schematically as well, sitting in a room with, you know, Patrick, Tony, Jay Bateman, and Corey Raymond. I mean, you're going to learn. I was like, I was at a football clinic every single day sitting in that meeting room. So that was a great uh, experience for me. Well, Coach, um, you bring in, you bring in a wealth of knowledge and I think, the credibility of doing it at those levels is really important. But i tell you what people don't always understand and ask that question to guys that have been in college and you kind of get a lot of the same answer, which is there's a lot of good coaches in high school ball, man. They got good, better players in college ball, but a lot of good coaches there too. A lot of good coaches in high school ball. And you guys are going to be in a really tough league with a lot of other good ball coaches, but um, I'm excited to have you back in Georgia, man, for sure. This is where you needed to be anyway. <laughs> no, man, I it feels good to be back. Obviously, I'm amongst a lot of colleagues that I, I competed against and, and coached with for a, for a lot of years here in the state of Georgia. And it's a great place. I think, you know, with me being able to go to college and kind of evaluate the entire country, right, see a bunch mm -hmm. of different players all over the United States, Georgia really is, I think, in my opinion, the best best state for, for high school football, hands down, in my opinion. I'm a Florida guy, yeah. but I think, you know, just top to bottom, the quality of competition, the coaching, the programs that are in this state, I think there's there's nothing better. The Florida guys tell me that there probably is overall better players in Florida as a whole. I mean, there's a really good group of players in Florida, but the level of what the expectation is for the player in Georgia, because the people have put more effort into facilities – and paying coaches and things that I, they need to be doing in Florida, I'll advocate for, that we've gotten some of Florida's best guys, including yourself, and it's really up the level of everybody. And yeah. therefore, the combination of all that, I would put us as a better place. Yeah, 100%. I tell yeah. people all the time because they always ask me, what's the difference between the two states? And I think that here in the state of Georgia, you can actually build programs as opposed to just having teams, right? And so because of those things you just mentioned, the resources, the investment in the athletics piece, um, it's just going to attract quality people to kind of surround those players with and truly develop them to the fullest of their potential. And that's what makes it great. Coach, somebody that's not familiar with you, but they live in the McEachern community and they're just listening to this because they heard it was McEachern. What they expect? What can they expect watching Coach Reed's team play? Yeah, I think the the main thing you can expect is that we're going to be disciplined and that we're going to play hard. Those are the two things that don't require talent. Um, that's just you know uh, want to, and that's just you know demanding that every single day out of your guys, and then the rest to kind of take care of itself. And so I think those are the first two things that should jump out at people, and hopefully it jumps out at our competition on tape is that these guys play really play really really hard and they don't beat themselves. Coach, is it different? I guess what's different at McEachern in terms of your 
obligation or level of involvement with the middle school team, the youth programs, is that more or less or the same than what you did at the other places? Oh, no, it's much more. I figured um, it was. Yeah, I'm truly in charge of the 6 through 12 program, essentially. And so, mm -hmm. I mean, that's beautiful, right? As a head coach, I mean, you kind of get that full straight from the top mm -hmm. to the bottom alignment um, when it comes to your coaches, your schemes, just kind of how you want to speak, uh, you know, to the players in terms of terminology. And so by the time you get them here at the high school level, they've kind of had a foundation already set. And uh, and that's the beautiful thing about McKeach and everything is kind of built in already for success. Yeah, it's a great place, man. If you're listening to this and you've never been to McEachern High School, you need to call Coach, see if you can just come <laughs> by for a minute. That is a it, – it's it's a college, man. It's not even a high school. Literally. It's, Literally. It's, it's unbelievable for people listening. And, you know, even though it's a Georgia thing, we'll get people listening from all over. So people that are listening from all over, just Google McEachern High School. I mean, that place is awesome. Um, But, you know, you still going to start with zero points, Coach. They ain't giving no extra points for that fancy stuff. <laughs> I know you know <laughs> that. About that. So, uh, so what's something at practice that you've learned over the years? That, so if I ask you, like, Coach, I, I'm struggling doing a good job coaching at practice. What's something you've learned that you say, you know, this has really helped me? You know, I think just – making sure you're organized, man, is the number one thing, you know, having a plan, a detailed plan, and then getting out there and working the plan, making sure that, you know, all the coaches are speaking the same language as you in terms of uh, preaching the message, whatever that vision is that you have as a head coach for the program, it needs to be really, really clear and be uh, for, for the assistants to, 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 to spit back out to the players. And so I think, you know, it's every single day, like planning out every minute of practice and just being structured and organized allows you to be efficient with your time because you don't want to spend a lot of time on the grass where you're not coaching, you know what I'm saying? And so yeah. um, I spend a lot of time just planning out practice every single day. I share it with my coordinators. We script out everything. So there's not a minute wasted. They're all accounted for. And we have a purpose for everything we do in every drill. I try to say on here, and I don't know if it's true anymore, but I know it used to be. It probably should take about twice as long to plan practice as practice is. So yeah. it, maybe that's two or three people doing it so you can combine the time. But if you're going to practice two hours, it's probably take about four hours to plan it if you're doing it right. Now, that doesn't mean you got to sit there for four hours, but the combination of three or four yeah. people may have to work. And um, technology may have made that a little easier. That might not be as good a rule anymore. But people used to be surprised when you tell them that, but then you go to practice, it wouldn't be organized. And, right. yeah, it just takes what it takes to be good. And, and you know, 100%. I mean, sometimes you got to do that. Coach, you mentioned your coaching staff, so I'm gonna give you a minute. I want to hear. I know a few of these guys, but I'm gonna not act like I do. <laughs> tell me everybody that you got on that you can tell me about. Anybody that stayed with you, the new guys. I want to brag on these assistant coaches, but you're building a good staff, man. I appreciate it, man. <clears throat> Definitely want to brag on these guys because at the end of the day, no man is an island, you know. And as a head football coach, you're only as good as the staff you kind of put yep. around yourself and surround those kids with. So the first guy I hired uh, is Aaron Shepard. He's actually a former head coach down in uh, down in Orlando in Florida where he took the Okoe Knights to uh, to the semifinals of their uh, classification down there last season, which was the best season they had in uh, in school history. And so um, really, really solid coach. I knew him from way back when I was coaching down in Fort Pierce, Back in 2007, he did a great job down at, at the school that he was kind of at across the town from me. So excited to have him, brought him up. Uh, Derek Siegeloff is an offensive coordinator that um, actually was my, my O-line coach when I was a head coach down in South Florida as well. And he, he made it, you know, the trip up and uh, joined forces with Matt Helmrich at Johns Creek for a few years and they had a great run. And so uh, when I had the opportunity to hire him and, and, and kind of put this thing together, I mean, he's a guy I'm really, really excited to have back. Uh, the, the one guy I told Ms. Montgomery when I was in my interview, I said, I got to have this one guy if I can't get anybody else, was Lou George. Uh, he's my strength and conditioning coach and defensive backs coach. He was at Douglas County last season. He was with me before at Westlake High School when we had A.J. Terrell and all those guys. And I mean, he does an unbelievable job just building relationships and um, running that weight room. I mean, he does some really innovative stuff there. And, um, and so he's one of my core guys that I, you know, any job I get, I kind of got to have him with me. Jabari Wilder is another guy that was with me previously at Griffin High School. He's the current or was the current uh, OC down at Lovejoy the past uh, year or two uh, down there. Does an excellent job. I think he's one of the up and coming rising stars mm -hmm. in the profession. Um, and, and, and good O-line coaches are really, really hard to find. So when you got one, you got to keep him close. And uh, he's a guy that, again, that I'm excited to have back with me. Um, Calvin Middleton is our running backs coach and special teams coordinator. He was also with me previously at Westlake for a year, and he went on to the college ranks at Albany State, where he was also in the same, uh, served in the same capacity there as their running backs coach and special teams coordinator. So he brings a lot of experience 
uh, obviously on the high school level and the, and the college level as well. Um, Chip Russell is our quarterback's coach. He was also with Derek over at uh, Johns Creek and Peachtree Ridge last year. He's a guy that kind of specializes in quarterback development. Uh, he works on that Elite 11 circuit uh, along with the QB takeover deal. So, you know, he works with a lot of high-level quarterbacks. And I think, you know, things he does on that camp circuit is really going to really going to give our kids an advantage uh, in their development on, on Friday nights. And so um, – Hans Batichon is our wide receiver coach. He was the offensive coordinator at Westlake last year. Um, a guy that's coached at some big time programs, play uh, like Burns in South Carolina and uh, as well. And he was also a wide receiver on that, that great App State team that beat Michigan. So um, brings a lot of experience to our, our staff and kind of, you know, again, just another guy that's called offense before. That's another good set of eyes for us to uh, to have on that, that side of the ball. So, I mean, um, you know, those are my main core guys that I hired and and guys that, you know, are new to the staff here. And then I re retained a few guys, um, you know, from, from the previous staff. <clears throat> Coach uh, Chris Cody worked with uh, the defensive backs here since like 1996. So he's been around the block here. He mm -hmm. knows everything about McEachern. So he's just kind of the OG of the staff and I keep him around. He knows everybody and everybody knows him. So he's a good guy. Added Phil Hoskins back to the staff who's, uh, he was here with Hotman back in their heyday. And he's the head track coach here as well. So we're kind of marrying those two worlds, which I truly believe in and mm -hmm. kind of just getting him back in the fold as well. Um, so, you know, just a plethora of guys we got. And I got a few more guys. I kept all the middle school guys for the most part. They just wanted to be a part of the staff and they're, they've been here for years and, and know the community. So, and they're really truly about just what's in the best interest of McEachern. So excited for the staff that we built, man. It's, those guys are ready to go. Um, they're great coaches, great men. And uh, we're going to do a great job. Well, I think when we talk about not to beat a dead horse, but talking about the Florida and Georgia thing, and not just Florida and Georgia, a lot of states versus Georgia, the level of commitment from the administration at so many places, you know, not just one or two really nice places in the state, but a lot of places, let you bring folks in. You already got great facilities, but they're doing these things and, and they don't, you don't realize how valuable that is. I talk to so many people all over the country now that, you know, in some places they, they just hiring you and you can deal with it. You can be out there by your damn self or you can be out there with, you know, whoever's left. So, in there. Uh, you know, so, I mean, it the, the commitment of little things like that just build a commitment of being able to be a 6 to 12 doing what you want to do. You know, these are questions I knew the answer to when I asked you, but I want people to hear that, yeah. you know, and what attracts you from the University of Florida where right. most people want to be there. Most people think they want to go there. But yeah. I think you've got a better job. I know. agree. <laughs> I mean, and, um, you know, but people need to, I just, it's it just kind of where we are in coaching. There is kind of a have and a have not. And, um, you know, I want to accentuate that to help people best I can. Coach, if you, I'm looking at your schedule. I mean, I'm bragged on you a lot, but this schedule, not any, this schedule, not as fun. <laughs> not early, no, for sure. Ooh, starting out with Langston Hughes, they set the all time state record for points scored last year. Um, you start out with Langston Hughes, you got Valdosta on the schedule, you got, you know, tough region schedule, Marietta, teams like that. So what if this is a successful year, and I don't even want you to tell me what that means, but mm -hmm. if this is a successful year, equal or better than you really think it can be right now, what had to really grow from now to then? What changed? If I talk to you again in December and I say, man, what an unbelievable year, what really got better from right now? I think just bringing up the floor of the roster in terms of their experience and just their execution. Um, you know, we had a scrimmage here uh, on Saturday and, you know, a lot of guys, so some of our top guys are in track right now. So a lot mm -hmm. of the younger guys are getting valuable reps that I think is going to build depth for the, the roster overall. And, and so just be accelerating the process. I think we got a pretty young team. And so, you know, bringing those guys along throughout the summertime um, all the way until we kick it off in August, man, is going to be huge for us. Um, I think the overall, um, you know, they did a really good job, I think, here with the weight room in the past. Um, they had they have a foundation there. And so just building on that and then incorporating the mobility and some of the sports science things we're going to do with our training to, to kind of make them the best versions of themselves is going to be huge. But I think, you know, just growing those young kids really, really quickly and trying to get them, recreate the game constantly for them over the summer. You know, put them in a lot of adversarial positions where we got to see what they're made of. They got to think, process fast and, and apply. So, um, you know, that's going to be huge for our development and just playing football. I think football is a developmental game where you just, to get better, you got to play. And so we just got to, you know, we got some OTA, seven on sevens, things of that nature scheduled. And uh, we're going to get as many, like I said, simulated reps in the game as possible before we actually got to kick it off on the 19th. Coach, um, 
I already knew it was a good hire when they hired you, but uh, my friend Steve Kraft tells me you're the best. So <laughs> no pressure. It's my, it's my boy. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I, um, I always heard great things about you, my man, and um, I'm excited to have you back in Georgia. We hope you, uh, hope you the I wish you the best success. Look forward to following you. I get out your way. I'll come see you someday. I appreciate it, man. I, I thank you for having me on, man. I'm excited to be back in uh, Go Indians, baby. Take care, Coach. Yes, sir.